There are so many different kinds of virtualization these days. One that you might not be too familiar with are the type one hypervisors. So these are usually gonna be installed on servers that are in racks that you would be remoting into. You're typically not gonna see them on a desktop at home, like with a screen and keyboard and mouse and everything. And usually you're going to be working with headless machines here. So you're gonna be working with everything over a terminal. An example of this would be data centers that lets you rent a VPS. So these are running some kind of type one hypervisor, most likely VMware or Zen on the physical hardware, which is usually going to be a bunch of multi-socketed motherboards that are usually gonna be filled out with Xeons or maybe uh, AMD's Epic CPUs and tons of RAM, tons of storage. And then they'll reserve a certain amount of RAM, CPU threads, and storage, depending on how much you paid for. You know, obviously, the more you pay, the more you get. And then you can provision your virtual machine on there, which for the most part, uh, most use cases, like if you're running a web server, for example, it's going to work the same way if it was installed in a virtual machine or whether it's installed directly to hardware. So this hypervisor software it can get pretty expensive, at least if we're talking about uh, VMware. So you can see uh, VMware vSphere, it cost $4,250 uh, if you wanted to license it. Uh, but really, if you're an enterprise, if you're running a data center, this isn't that big of a deal because they're going to be running probably millions of dollars worth of hardware, if not more. So paying $4,250 for software, it just really isn't that big of a deal for them. Now, there's another kind of Type 1 hypervisor that has a very different goal than VMware, uh, and this is one that actually is meant to be run at home called Cubes. Well, technically, Cubes isn't the hypervisor. Cubes is just the name of the OS. Zen is the Type 1 hypervisor uh, that Cubes is gonna be using. But this doesn't really feel like it's a hypervisor. It's meant to feel like a regular desktop operating system. I mean, you can pretty much see from this screenshot that it looks like a regular Linux desktop. Uh, but this desktop that you're looking at, like the, you know, everything here is actually running inside of a virtual machine. And then if you start opening other applications, like if you launch Firefox or if you open up your email, those applications are going to be run in separate virtual machines. And the reason for this is to have maximum security. So Zen is the free and open source hypervisor uh, that's used to virtualize everything in cubes. And it kind of provides the same idea behind Hunix. So you know, with Hunix, you're accessing the dark web through a virtual machine so that it's an extra layer of protection. Like if you download and execute something that you don't want to off of the dark net, uh, you're not going to have to worry, or hopefully you're not going to have to worry about your host machine getting compromised as well. The hacker might just compromise the guest and you can just delete that, restart it, and it's not a big deal. But even if you were to run Hunix, inside of KVM, which is, I guess, kind of technically a type one hypervisor and definitely more secure than VirtualBox, it's still not as secure as running it inside of a true type one hypervisor because escaping a type one is much more difficult than escaping a type two or even, I guess, maybe a type 1.5 if we're talking about KVM being built as a kernel module into a Linux host. Uh, but yeah, Cubes uses the virtualization to keep things separated, as you can see here. So uh, like different applications, depending on you know what they are, are going to have uh, different trust levels. So like this disposable VM that's going to be running Hunix with uh, Tor inside of it, that's going to be unsafe and untrusted. So it's going to have very limited access to anything else on the system. And then, of course, this is like the... You know, operating system used by Edward Snowden and other security experts. So yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty much uh, the most secure that you can get as far as an OS goes, thanks to the Type 1 hypervisor and the other technology involved in it. Uh, so now let's take a look at Type 2 hypervisors. So these you would run on your host just like any other program. So you can have a Linux host, Windows host, Mac OS, whatever you have on your computer at home, 
and then just run a virtual machine, which can be any other operating system inside of it. So this is what you see me use VirtualBox with all my distro reviews. Um, just it's pretty easy to install and then fire up some ISO uh, inside of it. But there's other types of type two. So QEMU is another one which is a little bit more advanced, but it actually has advantages over VirtualBox. So it doesn't require a proprietary BIOS, which is a plus if you obviously don't wanna run any proprietary software, but it's also going to be considered more secure since VirtualBox's proprietary BIOS is developed by Oracle, which has had really poor security practices in the past. Plus there's just the very fact that you know, the BIOS is proprietary, right? So it's more security through obscurity, which isn't really a uh, security. So a open source one is gonna be considered more secure. But another advantage is that you can do PCIe pass-through in QEMU, or at least you can do it for free. Um, with VirtualBox, you have to purchase a proprietary extension that lets you do it. Um, so with PCIe pass-through, Generally, it's a graphics card that you're passing through, but it could be any type of PCI device. Uh, and essentially what you're doing is you are blacklisting it from your main computer. So usually you would want to do it if you have a second graphics card. And when you boot up, your computer isn't going to see that second graphics card. But then when you start the virtual machine, it's able to see it and it's able to access it directly. So it's really handy for doing something like gaming on Linux. So, you know, with Linux, a lot of games just don't really work or you have to go through compatibility layers, which can impact performance. Uh, plus, there's all the nonsense with the NVIDIA drivers and there's also anti-cheat. So uh, if you want to get past all that and still play your favorite game, you can just spin up a Windows VM, uh, pass through some, you know, CPU and RAM. Generally, games don't need a lot of that anyway but then you can pass through that graphics card directly and then get really good performance. Uh, and again, not have to worry about anti-cheat since you're on Windows and be able to play your games. Now these days, there's another kind of virtualization which is becoming more and more popular and actually starting to replace a lot of the use cases that type one and type two hypervisor served, which is containers. So while a type one hypervisor can directly run on hardware to virtualize operating systems, and then type two will run alongside a host OS to virtualize operating systems, containers are really just designed to run certain applications without having to spin up an entire virtual machine. And this is why it's seen as the future of virtualization because it doesn't waste nearly as many resources even the cheapest options for a VPS, like if we look at what's offered here, uh, the cheapest one is a 10 gig SSD, a single thread CPU and 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, but this is actually quite a lot. Like if we're only going to be running one very small application, this is many times what you would need. So Docker is probably the most popular container application right now, and it doesn't even require any additional operating system to run on. So you can see why this would be the go-to move if you just need to run one simple application or a couple simple apps and don't wanna waste the resources of spinning up an entire VM for it to run inside of. So virtualization is really cool. It's actually one of the rare times that a piece of technology can provide you with both the added security and added convenience. The security comes in the form of separation. You know, when you virtualize something, you're pretty much creating a bubble that for the most part, nothing inside can penetrate out of besides old versions of VirtualBox with escape VM vulnerabilities. Uh, and the convenience is really big, you know, especially when we're talking about web servers. So like if your web if your website was installed to a bare metal server and it had a problem, like it created a memory leak that ate up all your RAM and then locked up the system, you might have to physically go to that server and then reboot it if it has slowed down to the point that you can't send a remote reboot command. Or, you know, let's say for example, if again you have a server with multiple uh, like web services running on it, running multiple websites then that single uh, service or single server going down could take all your other applications down. 
But if you're remotely interacting with the hypervisor, things are separated and the hypervisor won't lock up if the VM locks up. So you could just reboot from there. And a hypervisor is less likely to have problems compared to a full operating system because there's less code, there's less moving parts. It's also more convenient for desktop users. So if you want to try out a different desktop OS, like if you're a Windows user that wants to try out a Linux distro, but you're overwhelmed by the number of distros there, you can just install VirtualBox, download a couple ISOs that look good to you, and then boot them up in there. And that's why I do the distro reviews in VirtualBox to make it really easy for people like that to follow along. Uh, so try it out. You know, if your CPU is made in the last 10 years or so, it should support virtualization. Usually you want to have a decent amount of RAM and some spare hard drive space. Uh, so yeah, if you have the requirements, get started with it. It's really cool the first time you try it.